everyone, I'm Miss Hodgson, I'm a teacher based in London and I've been uploading all sorts of activities for you to have a go at whilst you're at home. And today I thought we'd have a go at doing a science experiment. I call this science experiment Blooming Flowers. We're going to be able to see if we can make a flower bloom. Okay, so to get started with this science experiment, you need very few things. You need some white paper, some colouring pencils and a pair of scissors. And a little bit later, you need a tablespoon of water and a plate or a baking dish. And that's it. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is draw the center of your flower. Now I'm gonna draw mine freehand. It needs to be quite big. And you can either do it freehand like I have, or you can draw around something like an egg cup. Next, you need to add the petals. Now they can't be too long, or else it will be difficult to fold them later on. But if you draw on your petals like so, all the way around the outside of your centre. Nice and simple. Once you've drawn your flower, it's time now to decorate it and you can colour it in, of course, however you like. I'm going to give mine a nice bright yellow centre, making sure that I don't go outside the lines. And then once that's coloured in, you can colour in the petals. You can colour them in however you like. You might want to choose a different colour for each petal or colour them in all the same. Try and make sure not to go over the lines. Now, once it's all coloured in, you can either cut it out straight away or you can write a fun little message in the centre. I'm going to write the word, hello. Like so. Now it's time to cut out your flower. You might need to have some adult help with this, but cut as neatly and carefully as you can around your flower's petals. You can always investigate different size flowers so you can have bigger flowers, smaller flowers, see what works best for you. The one tip I would have for when you're cutting out the flowers is making sure that you cut right down the edge of each petal so that it's going to make the next job much easier. So you have to be quite careful to go right up to the centre of the flower in between each segment of petal, like that. Okay, so the next step is to get folding the petals. Now, there's different ways you can fold them, but carefully, one by one, each petal can be folded into the middle, like so. You can see that. There we go. So that one I folded each one in turn. This one, I think I'm going to fold it slightly differently. I'm going to fold opposite petals together and see if that makes a difference. So fold a petal and then find the one on the opposite side. You get the idea. Okay, so all my flowers are folded and they're ready now to go into the water. So all I've got here is a little bit of water uh, in a baking tray, but you can put it on a plate or in a bowl. Just don't have too much. You only need a little bit for the flowers to bloom. And then all you carefully do is place your flower into the water and watch them bloom. You can see the petals beginning to open. There we go. The flowers have bloomed as if by magic. Only it's not magic, it's science. Stay tuned and I'll explain to you how it works. Okay, so different things you could investigate with this experiment. You could try uh, having lots and lots of petals or fewer petals that are a bit bigger. You could try size small flowers, big flowers. Do the smaller flowers work faster than the bigger flowers? Can you think of other shapes that you could use that had folding sides into the middle? There's all sorts of ways that you can investigate. Perhaps you could even try different paper thicknesses. Does that change the speed at which the flower blooms? If you've got brothers and sisters at home, you might even like to have a flower blooming race where you each make a flower and then see whose opens the fastest. You could have a bit of fun by putting some blue food colouring in the water and turning it into a pond. There's all sorts of ways to have fun with this science experiment. 
Now here comes the science part. How does it work? Well, the whole science experiment is based around something called capillary action. And what that means is, in simple language, that the paper has lots of very, very thin tubes inside it called capillaries. In fact, everything in nature is made up of a series of capillaries. They're like tiny, tiny straws. And since paper is made up of wood fibres, inside the paper there are lots and lots of those tiny, tiny straws. And so when they're placed in water, the straws suck up the water that's around them and force the paper to get bigger. And it expands and that's what makes the petals move. So really what we've been investigating today is capillary action. Hope you enjoyed doing some science at home today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you know when new videos have been uploaded. And don't forget there's always some extra activities to do in the box below. I look forward to seeing you again soon.